When I was brought over to this job, they told me, you have to come over, design a fuel nozzle that is gonna be 15% better fuel burn than what it's replacing. It's gonna have 50% NOx margin. And by the way, your customer is expecting a fuel nozzle that lasts forever in the field, basically. And so that's a tall order uh, for such a high technology component. When Josh Moop was assigned that job in 2011, additive technology had reached a milestone. Developers were telling design engineers like Josh that they could finally use 3D printers for test parts. We really needed to have a confluence of the right materials with the right type of mechanical properties and that came into being in 2005 when we started working with a material called cobalt chromium. Greg Morris is a pioneer in the field, but Josh still had doubts. I personally was very skeptical, uh, not coming in from an additive background. This is a process that is very foreign to people initially. You're taking metal powders and you're consolidating those, micro-welding those with a laser or an electron beam to create a three-dimensional object layer by layer. A fuel nozzle has a complex role in a modern jet engine, especially in a lean burn system. Additive technology offered engineers unprecedented freedom to optimize fuel and air mixing. The secret to designing a good fuel nozzle is proper management of air and fuel. Often I need very complex shapes. I need shapes that a machine tool cannot generate. I need hidden channels or cavities or whatnot that I cannot machine. Because these technologies are additive in nature and not subtractive, you can create designs that you can't create any other way. For instance, you can put in very complex internal passages, lattice structures, things that you can't cast, things that you can't fabricate, weld, machine. Additive technology brings to the forefront an ability to produce components and, and parts that you just frankly cannot make any other way outside of additive. Mark Shaw heads the nozzle design team, the person who would be responsible for delivering an additively manufactured part. There's always concerns with new technology. Um, and additive man manufacturing certainly isn't a mature technology. Um, the material properties are very good. The equipment is pretty reliable and has developed quite a bit through the years, but it's not to the same level of maturity as the subtractive processes. So there certainly were areas of concern. So the first milestone for me was when we first ran a nozzle that included some pieces made with additive manufacturing in an actual combustion environment, and they survived. Tests showed those first pieces would hold up and perform well. Circulating fuel temperature. The team decided to take things farther. So after that initial test where we said, okay, additive has a chance here, we now said, let's design the best fuel nozzle that we possibly can. We realized that we could start combining pieces together, and as we combined one piece and two piece, uh, we moved at some point and realized that we have 20 individual pieces here that perhaps we could print them all as one. And that was really the revelation, that was really the turning point in, the, in our thinking. This was a much more complex part, a bigger 3D manufacturing challenge. There was a period in time where we could not build that using the best that we knew from additive. That was a very tense time. Uh, I had a lot of senior executives saying, are you sure this is the right thing to do? I had to say, trust me. So that particular point in time, there were some extremely challenging geometry that were being presented to us uh, in fact, uh, we had some doubts ourselves as to could we build those components and meet those design criteria. I got a phone call approximately 2 a.m. in the morning. You never get a phone call at 2 a.m. in engineering. <laughs> right. Got a phone call from the manufacturer that said it did it, it completed, I think we can do this. And that, and that was it. That was the entire conversation. I knew at that point that we had it we could move forward, we were gonna make this work.